Hello everyone, I'm Alan, also known as McLaren2009, and I am back playing Derail Valley. Now, the good news is, I already have everything set up for what I'm trying to do today. Gotta go up here, pair this locomotive, but we'll wait to start it until we get our lead locomotive out of the roundhouse over here. Alright, so what we're doing is we are taking these boxcars full of ammunition down to the harbor. But before we leave, we have to go over to here and we gotta back up to the B track where we're getting a cut of intermodal containers also going to the harbor and a cut of tractors going to the farm. So for that, we don't really need two locomotives, but we're gonna do it anyway. because I might as well stick with the ones I've been using. Let's turn that off. We're not gonna need it real quick. We're not gonna need it just yet. All right. So we can, and we'll do that later. All right, let's let the uh, air pressure build up. Put it into forward. Basically, I've just been carrying these two locomotives everywhere, so I figure, why not keep doing it, you know? this switch and then we'll back up to it. Alright, that's far enough. Although realistically I could have saved myself a lot of trouble by just uh, using the remote. with my uh, background music and sometimes it doesn't want to play or at least sometimes I don't hear it. It's kind of weird and hard to explain. up this speed will be set. Yeah, 
just uh, four kilometers an hour. I was watching back through my uh, videos yesterday when I got everything uh, uploaded and all that fun stuff. And it turns out that the reason I can't use this with both locomotives is because at the harbor, the repair facilities are in between the door and the first column instead of the second and third columns. So basically the service pad is closer to the entrance, so you can easily use two locomotives. But you cannot do that here. But it's still really cool that you can repair the two locomotive or two DE6s at the harbor, city southwest, and the oil well. Alright, now because it's going to automatically apply that when I connect the MU cable. Let's just save some frustration and get it out of the way now. Alright, that's connected. MU cable. So apparently with the uh, real locomotives, there would be like four cables instead of just one. Alright, so let's turn this on, release that, apply that. Electricity, start the engine. All right, now I already have the uh, job booklets. So all I got to do is, why do you hurt me like this? All I got to do is just back up to the uh, next switch. back down this track right here. So let's stand on the ballast to the best of our ability. Ease off the throttle. And give it a second to get moving. Grab a drink while I'm at it. Because the game plan is that we're going to back over to the B track, hook up to the intermodal containers because they're going back to the harbor, pull forward, back up, hook up to the tractors so that they can get unloaded first. We can dump them off at the inbound track at the farm. And then we're going to have to get a little bit creative with the, uh, like we're going to have to get a little bit creative when we get down to the harbor. Because these can go into the military base, or these are going to the military base. And since they're, or since we passed the military base first, I don't see any reason to carry these into the rest of the harbor. So what sounds like a good plan to me is to set the train brakes for the uh, intermodal containers just outside of the harbor and then pull through 
and back these into the military base, then go back around the Y, hook up to the intermodal containers, and then get them over to the D track where they're supposed to go. But we gotta keep an eye on this spot because it's gonna start going downhill quick. See, 1.5% down. Which is kind of wild if you think about it. All right, now we're going out to the B track. We don't normally go out to the B track, but it works out. Let's get over here. I'm uh, really excited to get the uh, recap video for all of the uh, updates that they put out for the, or all the posts about Simulator for the month of February. Normally we would go left into the sea yard, but for this particular job, we gotta go into the B track. Which, to be perfectly honest, the whole reason we did this convoluted maneuver was because we had to get turned around to go to the roundhouse to repair both the locomotives, and then in the process of turning around, I turned around at the military base. And while I was at the military base, I was like, oh, there's some boxcars going back to the harbor military base. And well, we're heading that way anyway. So we'll just hook up to those boxcars since they're heavier than both of these. Go figure, something that actually contains lead might be heavy. Which, for the most part, that's what bullets are made out of. Or at least what the bullets themselves are made out of. The casings could be anything, but usually brass. But we ended our stream yesterday on a rather questionable note because I left these uh, containers of ammunition just hanging out next to the roundhouse when I should have refilled the locomotives, then got the boxcars. But we didn't do that, so we technically left explosives unattended in a place that's easily accessible by public and other people that might want to do bad things. So that's a prime example of what not to do with hazardous materials. But, as I was saying multiple times, uh, uh, safety third here in the valley. All right. And the cool thing about these loads is that uh, both sets of cars, like you look right here, 
11,000 kilograms for a flat car, 6,000 kilograms for tractors. And these are the same flat cars, so 11,000 kilograms for the car and 6,000 kilograms for the intermodal container. So basically, both of these cuts of cars have exactly the same weight as far as the cargo is concerned. So what that means for me is that it doesn't matter which one goes in front of the other. So we can organize them based on their destination because we don't have to worry about their weight. As long as these cars are in front, because that's 20,000 kilograms and 31,000 kilograms of cargo, as long as these are in front of those, that will not cause a derailment. Now, there are other things that can cause me to derail, like driving like an idiot or going way too fast, but if you've been following these streams for any amount of time, you will know that there is pretty much no chance of that happening. Okay, we hit another barrier. So apparently the thing that's slowing me down is just the switches themselves. The problem's not on the track, it's on the switch. Alright. Remember this, because it will be on the test. Uh, I am coupling the car from the rearmost vehicle to the frontmost vehicle. Like I said, remember that it will be on the test. I say that because the game likes to mess with me, and probably when I uncouple from these, when I get down to the harbor, it's going to be the other way around. It shouldn't be so upsetting, but it's just weird and annoying. Actually, I need to be over here because all the switches are on this side. All right, so the ammunition is pretty heavy, but this set of shipping containers and the tractors are very light. So it's Kind of like something that I experienced in real life driving trucks. Um, I was hauling a load of home appliances because I worked with uh, just dry vans, so I carried mostly dry cargo. Pretty much anything you can shove inside of it with a forklift. Well, one time I was hauling home appliances, and I was very surprised at how light those are. Like, I would have thought that, like, washing machines, dishwashers, that sort of stuff would be insanely heavy. Well, it turns out it's not. It turns out, compared to some of the other stuff that I had a habit of hauling, those are actually really light. And it was like a negligible weight, even going through the hills and mountains from Pennsylvania down. It was just light. Like 15,000 pounds worth of cargo or something like that something crazy like that.
Also, it kind of makes sense that, well, not really, because the uh, back container, I think, has electronics. Uh, this is, I want to say, clothing. Uh, at some point, it, it's a bunch of, like, mixed cargo. But it's really weird because metalworks, chemicals, they're not things that you would think of as light. But it turns out, in this case, whatever is in these containers actually is very light. So, once again, back to the front. Airlines. Now let's run to the back of all the tractors. I say that and it's like five cars. <laughs> Air is in fact connected. So, let's start pulling out. This actually is a really cool game to play. And there's a very good reason I've been... It was like one of the first VR games that I got. Although apparently I'm unusual because I'm one of the surviving people that has never modded the game. I just always had plenty of fun just with uh, how the game was shipped. say that like I didn't get a digital download on Steam. <laughs> I didn't get this in a box. That's the, uh, you can't even call it a joke, it's just a comment. <laughs> Alright, this track isn't labeled, so that's the through track. This one has to be left. Oh wait, no, not that one. That has to stay right, because those are the loading tracks. The switch I meant to flip is this switch, so that we're lined up with the C track instead of the B track. Alright, put this away, and let's go catch a train. As you can see, they are just slowly but shortly making their way down the road. going to derail. Alright. Everything's connected. Now we're going to the harbor. Or we'll, well, we're, gonna, we're going to the harbor, but we got to stop somewhere first. And let's see, 
is 41. Nope. Not that one. 27 is the one at the back. Alright, so it's got to go to B2I. Let's look at the schematic map real quick. carried away going past this intersection. It's another one of those things I've never been that way. Or maybe I have. I might have went there when I was going to the food factory. Probably from City Southwest. I think I have been up that way before. Alright, let's keep an eye on chat really quick. watching. Since I'm streaming in VR, I'm not the best at keeping up with uh, responding to questions and interacting with people, but I am trying. around with too many things in my computer because it is just having all kinds of problems. My frame rate is kind of like all over the place. I 
Oh well, live and learn. I do know that when I make this turn bypassing City Southwest, the speed limit's gonna go down significantly. It's like, it might be 60, but I think it's only 50, and then there's like this one part where it's only 30. So we are gonna have to slow down, but not yet. progress. Now the thing that's going to be kind of weird is when we get to the farm, the farm doesn't have a lot of track, so more than likely there's going to be something in the uh, inbound track, so what we'll have to do is pull all the way through it and back up the section of tractors into that spot and probably push something behind it. section. Now, a uh, sort of intelligent thing to do would be to uh, stop at Oil Well Central and see if there's anything going back to the harbor. But that might cause some complications because that means we're going to have to split up our crane somewhere so that we don't have the weight distributed improperly. Oh, and then there's this area. So we gotta go slow through here anyway. says it's flat. Let's just try to coast through here. So we don't split apart the locomotives going through here. It seems like coasting is the way to go. You can coast at like 20. You'll probably survive. As if you're around like 30, it's probably gonna break your locomotives. So you don't I don't wanna do that. Alright. Through that 
section. And there's also the uh, problem that if I do decide to swing by the oil well to see if there's anything going the same way that I am, I gotta get past the steel mill, which has that like 3.4% grade. And that's not fun with a full section of tankers. But we're coasting through here anyway. Specifically that section where the uh, grass is overgrown onto the tracks, that's the spot that causes problems for me. And the thing that kind of sucks about trying to pick up a job down there is just the fact that they're so heavy. Now, I've got two locomotives, and I can easily deal with the weight. It's just, it's gonna take a lot of effort to make that climb. And I just don't wanna go through it.
Yeah, there's probably at least one going back to the harbor. But I'm just not gonna risk it with my uh, computer going crazy today. certainty that when I get there, there's not going to be something in that track, and I'll have to back out and go down the main anyway. So, as kind of like a, a fail-save to make sure that that doesn't happen, I'll go all the way through it, and then back onto the inbound track, instead of pulling through it. I've been able to get away with just pulling through the inbound tracks at the machine factory, but so far that's one of the main places you can do it. I can also do it at the steel mill. So we can pull through it. But I think the last time I came through here, there was something on the inbound track. Or the last time I dropped something off here, I should say. And I was wrong, that is not a runaround track, that is a storage track. But now we got to go back here. And once the last car passes this switch, we have to realign it with the main. So that we can keep driving through here. place doesn't normally have too much cargo that's going the same way I am. So generally I don't pick up too much here. Like I'm gonna go into the station when I turn this in and see if they've got anything heading out to the harbor, but they probably don't. One of the main destinations that they said that this place sends things is just uh, like the uh, goods factory, city southwest, food factory. I guess we don't export grain in Derail Valley.
But who knows, maybe we do. even though it clearly doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I, I want to say don't block the uh, crossing, but the AI already is. So clearly, if they're not worried about it, neither am I. This one is still how I left it. I just don't remember where the station is. Oh, it's right there. No, it's not. Yeah, you can definitely tell I don't come here very often. I don't even know where the station is. <laughs> now let's check over here. Oh, it's right here, in front of this random DE6. All right, let's grab this. even worth the uh, diesel to get here. Alright, so what do we got? Uh, yeah, we got food factory, city southwest, farm, food factory, city southwest. Yeah, nothing going to the harbor. Alright. now sticking with the plan we're gonna drop these off outside of town we're gonna back up the uh, ammo cars turn around in the C track and back these up down in the D track Computer's acting up. The uh, playlist has gotten to the uh, track with the saxophone and thinks I'm trying to seduce the train. Alright, so we need... Yeah, that one's going in next. isn't insanely heavy, but the ammunition's kind of up there. So we want to hit this curve going at least 30. Can't 
accelerate too much. But this is without a doubt one of the steepest grades I've seen in this game. shallows out around the, around the turn, but it pretty much keeps going uphill all the way until this Y over here. that hill is steep, it's short. And then you just kind of have to ease into the fact that you're going uphill for like most of the way back to the harbor. Let's back it down a little bit. intersection you can only go 60. And then the other one is only 50, so let's dial it back a little bit more. Alright, so we can go 70 to the left. Yeah, I, I don't know how much, like, thought was put into, like, the speed limit zones. Because, like, some of the signs are entirely too close. And with too vast of a difference between them for the very short distance between them. So it's kind of, like, weird, and it's hard to get a grasp of what you're supposed to be doing. Now, I know they were put into the game as kind of like a guideline. But sometimes it's just not as helpful as it could be. on this one too. Even though that one looks like a pretty sharp curve. It really looks sharp on the map. But apparently it's not that bad. difficult is just when I get to the harbor and I gotta split the train up so I can get the uh, ammunition back into the military base and then get hooked back up to the intermodal cars and go from there. Keeping 
getting a pretty good speed up this hill. You have to be really glad that the uh, trees don't have like physics. Otherwise, this would be like a nightmare. You would never be able to do that. No matter how hard you try. Okay, why is that showing up like that? Ah. So, moving on. think that since that the ammunition is the closest that I would unload that one last but I made that decision simply because of how much the ammunition weighs if it were as light as the containers back there I would have put it at the back so that I could unload it first but, since I don't want the train to split apart in route, or have a streamlined derailment, I figured it was in my best interest to uh, put them up front behind the locomotives. And it just means I gotta add an extra step when I actually get to the harbor. There might actually be enough space that I can fit them on the Y. As long as I stop it uh, before the switch. But I'll have to wait and see. doesn't start getting bad until this last part of this U, just before the uh, final descent into the harbor. But it's not like it matters too much anyway, I'll just knock off the throttle, keep an eye on the speedometer, and just occasionally alternate with the uh, automatic brake. it as needed. or whatever is on the other side of that mountain. Maybe? Yeah, because there's a tunnel right there and then it would be the other side. But now we're going downhill. Like, see, literally right there was the sign for 70, and then you go two tar like two car lengths in, and it's like, nah, you can only go 60. It's hard to work around that. And 
and this one is 40. of it the speed limit's higher but you gotta keep an eye on it because you always have to remember that whatever sign you just drove past uh, not all of your train is in the place that you are so some of it could still be back in a lower speed limit zone so I pretty much tend to ignore the signs around here and just keep it under 40 because the sharp turns, it goes down to 40. And that's just how I choose to do it. It's probably being overly cautious, but it seems to be a pretty good practice. Especially since you really don't want to have, like, a, I guess, like, regular derailment where you actually leave the track completely, because that's a cliff. Let's not throw the train off the cliff, because it would be a nightmare to bring it back. Those signs are kind of weird, like the uh, valley and uh, crest signs. Like, are we going up or down? I guess in actuality the answer is yes. We are doing one, if not both, of those things. Really looking forward to the uh, simulator update. But, to be fair, I've been looking forward to it since they announced it. And then when we were getting all of the updates last year about how it got delayed because they found out the project required a lot more than they realized, and then they do something to the effect of they, uh, found a lot more things that were wrong that needed to be fixed and the best way to do it was to fix it all at once. Which is why we have all those comments about how they're essentially building the game again from the ground up. Because that's essentially what it's taken. So really looking forward to when that one comes out. Naturally, when they said second quarter, you would hope that it would be at the earliest part of it, so in April, but it's not sounding like that's going to happen. So 
the best we can do is like, or best we can do is just hope for like May, June. And also hoping for my computer to stop trying to kill me. So I can hit the brake. Yeah, this will be fine. that way nothing. Yeah, and this is the area where it gets bad. This is probably the steepest part. And it's just before you get to the harbor. speed contained. I still prefer to stay around 35. And I say that, but I just slowed down to 20. Alright, let's hit it again. Bottom. We can start thinking about how we're gonna do this cut. Alright. Apply some brakes. Because we're not out of the woods yet. gotta find a good place to cut the intermodal containers. So what I'm thinking is there might actually be enough space on this curve right here to drop them off. So we don't have to back up too far and they'll be on flat ground so we don't have to worry about them rolling in after us.
That'll be really cool when they bring in the bell. I don't have the slightest idea of when I'm supposed to use it, but... It, it's just cool. There's a button for it, but the button doesn't do anything yet. So, you just gotta wait for that one. is, in fact, enough space for all five cars right here. And they're definitively not on the hill. I mean, I made the comment at the beginning of the stream about, uh, remember this because it will be on the test. Well, you'll remember that this chain was connected to this, and now it is not. Now it's switched. Sure, this is aligned for the inbound track. It should be. Yeah, 7i. All right. So that's going straight. This is going straight. And that's going straight. So we go over here and wait for the last boxcar to cross the line. And right about there. Apply the independent. And let's park this thing. All right. Yeah, I was talking about this at the steel mill. I have never seen a flatbed trailer with the uh, panels on the side like this. Yeah, it's actually past the switch. You could still go into the military base. We've temporarily fouled one of the lines, but you can still get into the harbor. Oddly enough. But both this load and the one we dumped off at the farm, neither one of those was worth anything at all. This was the load that we needed to bring back, because this one is the one that's actually worth something. Maybe those two loads will pay to refuel my locomotives, but this definitely will.
All right, and we gotta be a little bit careful because right here is another one of those invisible bumps that I love to complain about. So keep an eye on our speed. We're currently going nine. <coughs> Alright, so far so good. Coasting back nice and slow. Alright, we're at the next switch. I don't know specifically which one it is. This is taking a long time. But being the only one working in the area, you don't have to worry about being in the way or blocking anybody else. You just end up blocking yourself if you cause any problems. Ooh, and then what do we got? We have trucks and nuclear flasks. These ones are cool because those jobs pay really well. But it looks like we only got one at the moment. And we got flatbeds. Yeah, it's anybody's guess. Question is, no, that is not the sign. But that is. Yeah. So, in theory, I can slam on the brakes right now, unhook these, and all is right in the world. We just go back over here and get back in front of that, and we're good. All right, those are going to the military base, so that's like uniforms and stuff, and these are also going to the military base. 30 grand, 16 grand, and 105. So if we're doing military cargo, that would be the job I would pick. Uh, so we're just forcing through a minimal application of the independent break. Actually, you know what? We don't have to turn around at the sea track because we can just go get onto the other end over there. Grab my remote. All right. 
yeah, we don't have to worry about it because we can already turn around the locomotives. So all we got to do is just get back on this end over here. Connect to the opposite end, and then we just got to line them up with the D-track. This saves us some time. It's that switch. <laughs> it's that specific switch. <laughs> but there's also a problem with this switch, so it goes either way. Because this way, we're already turned around and facing out, so when we come back this way, we go past the uh, switch track, or we, yeah, we go past the switch for the roundhouse, and then we just gotta back in that way. And then we already know that both of these will fit in there, and see what I mean? All three switches on this Y are messed up. But apparently the developers know very well that this problem exists. It might not be too much of a stretch to think that uh, this could be one of the things that made the simulator so necessary to rebuild a lot of things. And then, like, this right here is really weird in and of itself, because that is going slightly downhill, but you hit this switch and you start going forward when you want to go backwards. And this specifically is really dangerous because we don't want to slam into those cars going eight. Otherwise, I was never going to be able to do that by hand. That was clearly a terrible place to park the train. Alright, so now we no longer have to go down the C track. So we just run over here to the D track. Well, we run over to the switch that leads to the D-track. And I did not turn that in. Fantastic. I went into the office, but I forgot to turn in the job. Alright. Alright. And 28,000. All right, so it's not that big of a job, but it's still the best paying out of the three that I took. All right, now we need this job because it's going to D4I. 
Now, if I remember correctly, and I probably don't, four should be to the right. Maybe. No, I think it's to the left because to the right because seven is to the right and that's the loading track. So let's check over here. One, two, three, and this is probably four. Yep. Right there. left to the inbound. All right, and then this one has to go right. And then I gotta find my train. Because it could be anywhere at this point. So it just blew up these two cars. Either of those derailed? Right. Okay. We broke a couple of things. Somehow. And let's just hang this back up. If we can get it. No. What is deep? Di huh? Oh, this isn't good. 
Okay. There's nothing I can do about it. Okay. Now let's see if we can prevent that from happening. We're going like 15. 18 tops. And the speed limit's like 50. For reasons. finding a way to blow up an intermodal car with nothing dangerous in it. <clears throat> I mean, I say that, but that first container is marked as holding electronics, so they probably got, like, uh, precious metals and stuff like that. But I would imagine these do not have that problem. Because this is on the lighter side. So you kind of have to go a little bit harder through here. In case the track messes you up. But then you can't preemptively plan for it because then the car's going to explode. Y yeah, the update can't get here fast enough. <laughs> nope. Slowing down again. We're going to have some fees for this one. Oh, it's medical supplies. don't know what either of these are. Alright. It's like two of the cars are absolutely destroyed. The containers on them are severely damaged. Okay, not severely damaged. They're just damaged. It's not severe. The cars are messed up, but the containers are still good for the most part. But I don't think we're turning a profit on this trip. Breaks. All right. Go turn this in. Now 
not looking forward to this one. regular wear and tear, but it's nice that you think it is. Okay. Now we're going to get out here and find out the freaking locomotives blew up next. There actually is a good chance that that could happen. Nothing is safe. The end is coming. All right. They don't want to speed up because bad things happen. Yeah, it totally works if you hit the horn after you've already passed the crossing. If anything was there, they're already dead. And then we're just honking the horn to say we don't have insurance. a crossover between Derail Valley and Kerbal Space Program any second now. Okay, so that's back lined up with the E-Track. And let's go to the roundhouse. safe getting to the roundhouse. But we haven't stopped yet, so there's still time for this to go horribly wrong. Let's see what locomotives we have this time. We have 29, 54, 56, and uh, 61. I really should try using the uh, steamer again. Just the, the problem is I don't know how to do it efficiently. Like, I don't know anything about steam. 
aside from the stuff I picked up watching a couple of people play uh, Railroads Online. That's literally the only source of information I have on how Steam is even supposed to work. So basically, my knowledge of Steam is even less than my knowledge of Diesel Electric. It does help if you put it in reverse. Although, to be perfectly honest, until the traction motors are implemented, these are not technically diesel electric. These are just straight diesel. Because the engine is directly controlling propulsion. not traction motors. But the traction motors are coming. I would assume that the locomotives that I've built in Stormworks are technically diesel mechanical. Because it has a direct drive diesel engine and a gearbox transmission, even if it is automatic. But, to be fair, I built them before I knew anything about diesel locomotives. I said we were mostly safe going back to the roundhouse, and then it gets to the turntable and decides it doesn't want to go backwards anymore. It really doesn't want to cross the turntable. Okay. here, maybe. Let's turn that off. Turn that off. Turn this off. And now let's walk through the wall real quick. And let's refuel this. Yeah, basically, uh, every dollar we've made on these three trips is gone. But, on the bright side... <sighs> at least the locomotives aren't damaged. We probably have bigger things to worry about, We do know that they fit in here. But the kicker is uh, getting them to want to go back here without love tapping the bumper. Alright. Okay. 
neutral, turn that off, put that away. Put that away, turn that off, turn that off. And kill that. Okay. Still connected. This one's going to be a little bit higher because it was running a little bit longer. But we still haven't needed sand. Seven grand, seven grand. Fourteen thousand plus another ten thousand for the uh, damage to the cars. And then it's probably going to be another eight hundred for the repairs. So somehow, in spite of all of the catastrophic failures, we may still have managed to turn a profit. Even if it's only, like, barely, we may have accomplished something. Oh, that's in the song. I was like, what the hell am I hearing? All right. Actually, I wasn't far off. About 800. A little shy of 800, honestly. Alright, so let's quickly get an idea of what's leaving out of here. Going to the food factory. is going to the food factory. Oh, well, north. You know what? I say that, but I know very well there are uh, food tankers. City southwest. City southwest. All right, those are looking good. Seven hundred and four, two seventy, three hundred. Ooh, that's a settling. Those are uh, spicy deliveries going to the machine factory. And we can always go over to the military base and pick up the fun stuff up there. because there are a couple of deliveries going up to the military base. Although, if we're going up to the military base, we could easily swing by the goods factory and oil well north if we felt so inclined. All right, let's take a quick look at our stats. All right, copay remaining about 500 grand. All right, so I can cause 500 grand of damage without it uh, taking every dollar I've got, which 
And somehow, in spite of everything, we're over 1.2 million now. Making pretty good progress, despite not having anything to work for. But, that seems like a pretty good place as any to stop for right now. So, thank you all for watching, and have a nice day.